Hi there, I'm Esther from Blythe, and I have here my very own homemade Union Jack flag. We've been celebrating Friday just gone, the 75th anniversary of VE Day. Victory for Europe, 8th of May, 1945, the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany. Now, I can't even begin to imagine the sorrow, pain, and fear people experienced during the war when millions of men, women, and children suffered and were killed. My mum was two when the war began and eight when it finished, and she really didn't like talking about it. And more recently, before she died, she remembered the war in a, the most vivid way and it was heartbreaking to see and she said that she was frightened during the war very very frightened and my granddad Pa Chopin was a Japanese prisoner of war and he was one of the soldiers that came home but he suffered severely during the war and it changed him. And I'm reminded of being told about the Battle of Dunkirk and how thousands of British and allied forces were evacuated to Britain on Sunday the 26th of May to the 4th of June, 1940. Now, two days before that began, on Friday the 24th of May, 1940, our King, King George VI, the Queen's father, gave a speech. And I'd like to quote some of that speech. He says, At this fateful hour, we turn as our fathers before us have turned in all times of trial to God Most High. Here in the old country, I have, I have asked that Sunday next will be observed as a day of national prayer. It may be possible for many of our brothers overseas to join their prayers with ours. Let us with one heart and soul, humbly but confidently commit our cause to God and ask his aid. He continued his speech and he ended with these words. And with God's help, we shall not fail. On that Sunday, the 26th of May, 1940, the National Day of Prayer, the evacuation of, of Dunkirk began. Here was a king who acknowledged that Britain and Europe needed divine help from God Most High, Yahweh. And he knew the importance of calling a nation to pray. And many miracles happened surrounding the Battle of Dunkirk. And five years later, on Victory for Europe Day, the enemy surrendered unconditionally. There was deep sadness for those who never came home many people who gave their lives so that we today could have freedom. There was also great joy and celebration, dancing, cheering, shouting, street parties, barn dances, celebrating the victory. What a day that must have been. So what about us today, COVID-19? It's been said that it is a silent, an unseen enemy. We see the effects of it, it's devastating. Many tens of thousands of people have lost their lives. And we have a deep respect and gratitude for those who have died helping others and those who risk their lives every day saving others. But I noticed something that the leaders of the world in some countries have called their country to pray. But today our country, our leaders haven't called us to pray. 
and that causes me deep sorrow. It really does, it causes me to be very sad. But that doesn't mean that people aren't praying. As King George VI called our nation to pray in 1940, may our nation hear the call to pray in 2020. May we in this country turn our hearts back to God Most High, Yahweh. May we turn our hearts back to Yahweh. Isaiah 45 verse 22 says, Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. Psalm 145 verse 18 and 19 says, Yahweh is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. That's with sincerity. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him, those who have a reverent respect for him. He hears their cry and saves them. He wants us to turn to him. He longs for us to turn to him and call to him. He knows sorrow. He knows suffering. He knows heartache. He gave his only son, Yeshua, the King of Kings on the cross so that we could be reconciled back to the Father and have a relationship with him. You know, Yeshua won a great victory when he rose from the dead. A great victory, greater than VE Day. Revelation 1 verse 18, Yeshua says, I am the living one. I was dead and now look, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of sin, death, and Hades. Hallelujah. A great victory over Satan and sin was won that day. And that victory can be anyone who wants it. It can belong to you, it can belong to me. If we just turn to Yahweh, and be saved. Yeshua came, the Bible says, to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and release from darkness to the prisoners. What a hope we have. And you know what? The King of Kings is coming back to this world that we live in to rule and to reign one day. Do you believe it? It's true. And time will tell and prove that what I'm saying today is true. You know who else believed that? Queen Victoria. And I'd like to read what she said. One day, the chaplain of the good Queen Victoria preached a sermon on the second coming of the Messiah. After the service, he approached her and asked, Why did your majesty weep when I spoke today? Oh, said she, because I do hope that he will come in my day. Why does your majesty desire that he should come in your day? The chaplain asked. Oh, sir, that I may lay my crown at his feet such humility. Let us in this country and across the world humble ourselves before the King of Kings like King George VI and Queen Victoria did and let us pray. Pray for your leaders. Pray for your country. Pray for the people and pray for the people across the world. It's time to pray.